Hello, my name is Stephanie Wiles and I'm the Henry J. Heinz II Director of the Yale University Art Gallery. This fall, the Art Gallery celebrates the achievement of women artists who graduated from the Yale School of Art over the past 150 years. Among my favorite works in the exhibition is this untitled piece by Eva Hesse, made in 1967. What captures my attention is the roughness of the highly worked background plane. I love the dynamic play of light across uneven surfaces and how the artist brings this into dialogue with 16 loosely hanging chords. She creates a relaxed framework, four rows of four chords each. They emerge thoughtfully from the surface. They are smooth and fluid. Some cast a shadow on the wall below. I think about marble or stone relief sculpture, the immobility of the surface plane, inflexible, hard, impenetrable. Movement is communicated by form and subject matter, not by material. As I consider this remarkable piece, I smile to think about Hesse's training at Yale, studying painting with Joseph Albers, and I delight in the lyrical freedom and exuberance she brings to her square. Really cannot identify. Her work moves me greatly. I don't really know why. I can look at 10 other people in Soho, you know, in the Soho galleries, doing work made out of the same materials, and it will leave me cold. But her work somehow uh, presses on you. You know, all the words of art criticism will not explain why or demonstrate why a work of art is moving. Uh, and I don't, I really, I can't tell, but I'm, I'm happy that it does because it's, um, it makes you love art all over again. Uh, the longer I look at it, the more it becomes symbolic of other things. Um, and so like part of me looks at it and sees like an, o like an ocean full of trash. But like, but the longer I look at it, that ocean of trash becomes like kind of mesmerizing and beautiful. Even though I know that's not what this piece is about at all, but like the surface of it, I sort of am emotionally taken just by that, by the sort of the, the depth of the, of the textures and the, the shapes. Looking at it in reproduction, I think um, what I get from it most is a sense that it knows things. Um, <laughs> you know, it's a work that knows things. Maybe it knows things about my body, maybe. Um, bodies like mine, you know, female bodies. Um, knows things that uh, maybe I also know or that I don't know. The way that those elements that are hanging off it and wanting to kind of just exceed the square, exceed geometry. but. I find painting and sculpture actually very mysterious uh, media that um, that do their thing in ways that uh, that yeah kind of do ask for kind of physical encounter. There is something here of a transformation, a new material emerging from a solid, almost impenetrable surface. If not transformation, then insistence. Perhaps the strands were always strands, but imprisoned by the square. But their emergence is a triumph of a kind, since not only do they emerge, but they curl. They curl themselves into knots or bows at the end. They punctuate their emergence this way. As knots, they are defiant, if bows, triumphant. They're not frayed. The stone itself may have been transformed by this emergence. There are rugged ditches in it. It is mud-like in appearance, as if the presence of the strings keep it from solidifying. From solidifying totally. So what transforms what is the question here? The string's intentions are never to return to the solid. And to secure that, there are knots, blockages, where they emerge from the stone, preventing the pull of the stone. 
The Ava Huff piece was fascinating to me because it most immediately looked like um, uh, like really dark uh, Adobe wall first to me. <laughs> um, and uh, there's this great artist, Rafa Sparza, who has been doing these installations uh, where he installs like uh, Adobe kind of walling and then he paints portraits on top of them. And so when I saw this, I was like, oh, I can kind of see this really like kind of rough industrial feel that Eva Hass is trying to go for. Well, it makes me think about uh, repetition. It makes me think about opacity. And those things are, are obviously useful uh, in terms of think, thinking about writing and what you can do in writing. But I also was thinking about um, that sculpture being thought of as a steady for this much larger piece, uh, I think called uh, constant. That's, that's maybe like 60 by 60 by five and a half inches. And I was thinking about what that means in terms of uh, my, my practice and, and what draws me to visual art in general. I think I really love the kind of preparatory space of creation. Um, I, I love the, obviously I love the drawings um, that a lot of people do before they make the painting. Uh, there's a there's that feeling of, of the process and the kind of figuration in it. Um, so I really like the idea that this is is a kind of like thinking piece or preparatory piece for something else. There is a sense of suspension of being frozen in time, as well as a sense of movement. Um, and so it, it 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 was doubly you know the fact of of something that is a sculpture or looks like a sculpture but also is photographic that that the pieces of rope together against that background that deep earth brown background that shimmers somewhat made me think of again the ocean at night it made me think of the hold of a ship and those and the the ropes seem to mimic people in the act of walking. I saw four people just frozen in a certain walking posture. And really what it did was just make me think, it made me think of the middle passage and it made me think in my own vernaculars um, of the kind of deep familiarity and in a kind of elegiac way, um, you know, I felt like maybe I knew these four people, but that is me projecting something, some kind of significance into the, the frame, so to speak. <laughs>